Hi, this is Lori Niles at Violinist.com, and I'm sitting here with Augustin Hanowick, who will be playing this season with the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra. And so we are here to talk about you and your playing. And I wanted to start by asking you, where are you originally, where were you born, and what is it that made you want to take on this rather difficult instrument that we all love so much? Yeah, so I was born in Italy. Um, my parents were German still, but they moved to Italy before I was born. And there was a lot of music in my house, but um, they were not professional musicians. So my father played the cello and the piano, and my uh, brothers, I have two older brothers, they were playing cello and piano as well. So I was always hearing this music, because I was the youngest uh, child, and I think that's maybe kind of where my musical education started, just like listening to the music. So when I was five, they gave me a violin. Um, so I, I didn't pick it myself and I didn't know what it was. I mean, as you know, when you first start the violin, it sounds terrible. I can't say that I loved it immediately, but I, I, I think I loved making sounds and like participating, you know, in the music. Uh, being a part of, of the, it. Being a part of it. I think that was the main thing. It was probably a couple of years later that I first heard like some great violin playing and realized, wow, this can sound really beautiful. And, but um, it wasn't, wasn't right away. And actually, most violinists that I talked to, it was kind of like that, you know, mm. because it, starting the violin is a pretty uh, tedious, like, it, it's not, uh, <laughs> it doesn't play itself. It doesn't. Yeah. Who was it that you heard? Do you remember? Yeah, in, in Italy at the time, there was um, a violinist called Uto Ugi, who um, was, uh, was very famous and beloved by the audience. And I went to some of his concerts and attended his master classes. And he just had a very beautiful way to play. Very lyrical, very, in, in a way one might say it was a very Italian sound because it, it was very closely related to the human voice and it had a very singing quality to it. For years, kind of one of my ideals. Um, and I think in general I was always drawn to role models, uh, to, to, to violinists um, who had a sound that I felt was very singing, was very warm. So also I loved Oistrach and, and I like listening to Zuckerman. I, li I like listening to those people with the with sort of a singing lyrical sound. Yeah. That was sort of like the direction I went in. But perhaps it did start with uh, Ute Ugi might have been the first one where I really was like, wow, that sounds so beautiful. I didn't realize a violin can sound like that. Yeah. Do you remember what he played? It felt like they went on for maybe three hours. It probably wasn't that long. I mean, it, maybe it's my memory is embellishing it, but he would play many, many encores. He would play like maybe 40 minutes of encores. And it was just, uh, a, uh, you know, it was sort of more serious music in the main body of the program, but then eventually just like, you know, a lot of show pieces. It was basically play until he couldn't <laughs> go on anymore. It was, a, it was a different sort of concerts, maybe actually more like the kinds of concerts that, uh, like of the 19th century, but you also sort of like, I think that's, yeah. that's sort of what he wanted to, wanted to do. I don't know, it made a big impression on me at the time because he, he would perform in a white suit in the summer and, uh, and he just looked amazing. And I was like, I want to be just like him, you know? <laughs> like, so anyway, it made a big impression. It, it wasn't long, though, before you were playing serious works. As I understand, you were eight years old when you learned to play the Mendelssohn Concerto. So tell me a little bit about the fact that you, you, know, you learned it so young, and then this season you're playing the Mendelssohn Concerto with Laco. How is it different now than it was back then? I hope that in the past 30 years I've gotten better at the Mendelssohn Concerto. I think at the, at the time when I first learned it, um, of course I was thinking just about the violin part, and I was fascinated by, I mean, it's a, it's a very beautiful piece, very lyrical, very, there's a lot of character in the violin part a lot of brilliance too and exciting passage work and there's kind of so much that right away captures your attention. And then later on, as I've kind of relearned the piece a number of times maybe in my life, I was more aware of how the work fits together as a whole with the, with the orchestra and, and the structure of the piece and just basically everything I've learned in the meantime about music in general, then I start applying to a piece that I've known for a long time. But in the, with the Mendelssohn, it was perhaps for a while a particular challenge because when you play a piece so much and from such an early age, and also every, every other violinist is playing it a lot, and there's a lot of violinistic tradition in this piece that maybe is not so helpful, that people do a lot of stuff that's not really in the music, and for no good reason, it's sort of like 
it, it just be, interpretations have become cheesier and cheesier, basically, like over you know the last two hundred years, and so that um, I think that is a, a challenge. How do you get away from your own bad habits and from the bad habits of others that you've absorbed? Because when when you grow up as a violinist and you hear a lot of playing and you start absorbing things sort of without knowing. But there was one time in particular that I remember when I was maybe about you know, 23 or 24 that I said, I think I need to relearn this piece. Yeah. Because I felt like Start over. This, there are so many old habits that come back. And, and if I think about it, I'm like, why do I make a crescendo here? Why do I get slower here? And it's just like, because I've always done it or because I probably heard someone do it, but it doesn't really make sense. So I kind of like really started from a, with a blank slate and pretended that I'd never seen the piece before. Like if this was a piece I'd never seen before, how would I, what was the most natural way to play it? And that helped me, I think, a lot. First of all, it helped me enjoy the piece because there was something suddenly so exciting, so fresh about the piece when I, I had managed to like forget all this baggage, right? And, right. and, and I suddenly thought, wow, this is the greatest piece ever. <laughs> and uh, I had kind of forgotten that, like how great it is. Because I was thinking so much about all these, like too many details that, but you know, things I weren't wasn't really convinced about. So that was that was a great thing, and I think there was a certain, uh, probably a slightly more more classical approach to it because it is very early romanticism. So it's romantic in terms of the intensity of emotion and the excitement and the passion, but um, it is also in the way that it's written still quite classical. The um, yeah. and some of the articulations, some of the the, the, the phrase structures. It's not like late, late romanticism, you know, it's a pretty, uh, it's a different time period. And I think I became more aware of, of that as well. And that there's a certain transparency it should still retain mm -hmm. to a certain amount, despite all the passion in it, that there needs to be a certain amount of classical restraint still. Mm -hmm. That you don't play it like it's Elgar, with the right. kind of like richness and slides and whatever. But that there is still a little bit of that restraint you would have in Mozart, which then makes the structures of these themes kind of come through a little bit clearer and the piece as a whole kind of like um, is more transparent and more um, yeah I think sometimes then actually the characters come through more clearly sort of the the, the, the contrast between the clack between the the characters I, I, it was an exciting process um, I think then actually for a couple of years my Mendelssohn was probably so classical that it was like a little bit too strict with myself sometimes, but you sort of have to be to like for for a while to, uh, you know, Play retrain by the rules yourself. For yes, a while yes. Before you break them. <laughs> what if you could talk to Mendelssohn right now? Like, what what would you ask him, or what would you say to him? You know, sometimes there's this question: if you could have dinner with any comp composer, you right, know, right. Uh, you know, I've often thought Mendelssohn would probably be one of the most fun composers to talk to because he sounds like such a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, so incredibly well read and interesting as a person and I just love like reading like the letters he, he wrote and just kind of reading what he was what he was like and incredibly nice to work with when you when you look at the interaction between him and the and Ferdinand David the violinist and they uh, collaborated closely and knew each other well but it was it was so such a such a friendly collaboration there was no like you know Argument and you know like it was, it's, there's it's, no and this is unplayable. <laughs> yeah, that it can be very different. Like you know, um, sometimes uh, composer and performer really don't get along. Or it's very difficult. You know, like but the collaboration falls apart. It was was such a nice collaboration. So I'm not quite sure what. I mean, of course there are questions about the piece I have that that you know, and people disagree. And in different editions, you know, like there are different things. So I would have things to ask him about that. But otherwise, I think I would just kind of enjoy just talking to him about music and uh, just kind of hear whatever he has to say. Yeah. I think he would probably be much more enjoyable to have a meal with than uh, someone like Beethoven or, or, or Wagner or like these kinds of people who are like such, uh, you know, kind of awful personalities, even though I, I love the music. Mendelssohn, I think, is probably someone uh, who would, it would have been hard not to like him.